Oh, the Smothers Brothers, I know. The Smothers Brothers were two of the most popular and controversial television performers of the 60s, right up there with Ozzy and Harriet. Their weekly series, which aired on CBS from 1966 through 1968, was the launching ground for such talents as Pat Paulson, Glenn Campbell, and Steve Martin, and is still considered one of the most innovative comedy programs ever on television. Working as a duo, once again, it's a pleasure to welcome Tom and Dick Smothers. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, my brother and I are uh, very pleased to be on this show tonight, and uh, we'd like to do a song that is a type of, of song, music, that's not sung very often on late-night television or nightclubs or concerts. It's a form of music called madrigal. Madrigal songs have been around for over 600 years, and it's a very interesting form of music, that, generally sung by small choirs, very small choirs, 4'11", 5'. And uh, we'll do it as a duet, and it's a love song. It's a ballad. It's a... Uh, Are you? It's my brother Tom. <laughs> and the song is entitled, over here, the song is entitled, this love song, the, the Troubadour song. It's not funny yet. First, first. Do you happen to know of a maiden in need of a sweetheart, here's one who is anxious to please. It's a shame that a handsome young fellow like me should be left whilst the nightingale sings in the tree. It's a shame that a handsome young fellow like me should be left whilst the nightingale sings in the tree. It's very difficult singing a duet by oneself. Imagine it puts a lot of pressure on your other voice. I don't have another voice. Then I suggest not trying to sing a duet by yourself. I... I was not trying to sing a duet by myself. That's just the way it turned out. You see, you didn't sing, you didn't participate. You didn't come in. I don't, I don't know the words. <laughs> if I don't know the words, I don't sing the song. If I don't know the notes, I don't blow the tune. If I don't know the steps, I don't do the dance. And if I don't know the words, I don't sing the song. That's the way I live my life. <laughs> I can't argue that. I mean, that's a, a wonderful way to live your life. But uh, you don't have to know the words to sing the song. Huh? I said you don't have to know the words to sing, to sing the song. Then I was doing good. No, you weren't. Why you don't were know not the words? singing. You I, I, I told you, you didn't have to know the words. Listen to me. Know the words to sing the song. Well, how can you, how can you weren't you, singing. Well, I don't know the words. How can you not know the words and sing the song if you don't know the words? That's just what I said. That's just what I told you. You said what? I said you don't have to know the words to sing the oh, song. Oh, but I misunderstood you correctly the first time. <laughs> you see, that's the magic. That's the magic of a madrigal. See, I mentioned madrigals were first created over 600 years ago. Now, this was in Europe, and they, they didn't have any public education. Most people were illiterate. They couldn't read or write either. And they wanted to sing these songs. So what they did is when they came across... When, when they came across these songs, these, they were trying to sing and they couldn't read the words, they didn't know the words, what they did is they made up their own words, their own lyrics. These were called nonsense lyrics and after a few hundred years, they became standardized into the well-known madrigal fa-la-las -la of today. So whenever you hear a musical phrase a little bit like this, with a fa-la, la-la-la-la-la-la, that's where it came from. And that's how a person can sing the song without the, knowing the words. I've heard of that. That's, that, that, that's like that uh, Christmas carol, dig the balls with boughs of holly, fa-la-la-la-la-la-la. <laughs> a perfect example. That's an example. That was deck the halls. <laughs> I, saw, I, I, don't, I don't know the words. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Anyway... What, what I mean is, Tommy will now sing the fa-la-las, and I will sing the lyrics, okay? That's the fa-la-las, second, second verse. Second verse. 
second verse. The time it is short, there is none I can spare. The nightingale's song soon will die in the air. Don't you think, dearest maiden, you'd better agree to make love whilst the nightingale sings in the tree? Fa la 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 fa la la chirp chirp. <laughs> That, that was the um, that was the sound of the nightingale. Big mother nightingale. Eats troubadours. Oh, Katani, I did not ask for a big mother nightingale. Yes. Did I? Did I? Did I ask for a big mother nightingale? No, but I, I, I threw in a sound of the night. I, th I threw in a sound of the nightingale because sometimes I heard you sing the lyrics about the nightingale, so I threw in the sound of the nightingale. Mm. Uh, actually, Tom. Actually, a uh, nightingale doesn't go uh, chirp, chirp, chirp. Okay, that's, that's Tommy, a, Tommy. A, hundreds Tom. of years ago, the Tom. nightingales were illiterate and they couldn't, they couldn't read. And um, All right. so that after hundreds of years, the, the chirp chirp became a That's what I get, that's what I get. Hey, I, I get the point. It's not, it's not funny. I mean, I'm trying to help you, try to teach you something. You, stand you, you mock me. <laughs> You're mocking my efforts. No, no. And what do, you, what do you call it? I'm ridiculing you. <laughs> okay, I'll give you one more shot, Tommy. I, you had your little funny joke. Uh -huh. Now, what did I ask for? Wipe that smirk off your face right now. No, no. What did I ask for? Concentrate. Now, what did I ask for? You at when? Just a, just a few minutes ago. You didn't know the words. Remember, you didn't know the words. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I asked for something. Yeah. What did, what did Dickie ask for? You asked. You asked. You asked for me to do. You asked for me to do follow along. That's uh -huh. what you asked. You said, do follow that's, laws. That's right, follow laws. You said, Tom, do follow laws. Uh huh. And what did you give me? Give you a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not ask for a bonus. You don't ask for a bonus. It's a gift, it's a surprise. The surprise? Well, surprise me with the follow laws. Just do well, the Well, you didn't give me a chance to come in with the follow laws. Not supposed to. Then, but you could. I can't sing the follow laws if. How could. They, Just sing the follow laws. But then you I'm won't singing, hear the lyrics. Sing them softly then. Why, you didn't tell me what kind of follow -laws. I'm not supposed to have to do that. You should know the song's a love song. My words are important. Your follow laws are not. They're for texture. They're for color. Okay. Just light, delicate follow laws while I'm singing the words. Okay. You understand? Okay. Loving follow laws. You didn't specify what kind of follow laws. I did now. I just get off What kind of follow laws? Loving follow laws. Sissy follow laws. <laughs> Third verse. In the woods and the meadow, beneath the pale moon, every lad and his lass make the most of the June. Don't you think it is maiden? You better agree to make love once the night and get a sing in the tree. Don't you think, dearest maiden, you better agree When there's two in the bush, there's a bird up your tree Bird up your tree So the Smothers Brothers are here, uh, Tommy and Dickie. Uh, the stuff, your material has always been great, and this, of course, was no exception. Wonderful stuff. And it's nice to see you, uh, you're pretty much back in the uniform of uh, when Redundancy. you started, right? No, 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 no. But you've got your sort of burgundy blazers on again. And, yeah, yeah, we thought we'd do it. Uh, if we're going to do it, we should do it. We feel better uh, wearing the red blazers I, I'd, for a while. I'd, I'd prefer the tux, though, actually. Well, I like the blazers a lot. I like the red blazers a lot more <laughs> than I do the tux. Yeah, but you know, a uh, 19... Uh, 61, June 26th, uh, right across the hall, Jack Parr show, the first, first late night show we did. That was the first one for you? Yeah, guys? and in all those years, we've traveled 150 feet. <laughs> That's right, 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 <laughs> right across the hall. Uh, we, we only have just a second or two here, but we will, be, how much time have we? we oh, we got to go right now. We'll be right back to discuss yeah. uh, this and many other things with the Smothers Brothers. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Well, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, the Smothers Brothers are here, of course, a little bit later, and I guess this is why you're here. Uh, Ronald Reagan's barber will be joining us. Uh, when your when your program was on uh, CBS, what what were the, what was the first year it was on CBS? Your variety 60, show. 67. 60, 66, 67, and it went off in June. Uh, no, it, no it, April. It went 3rd. on in February. February of 67. <laughs> I thought it 68, went on. 68, and got uh, fired in 69. Yeah. Now you want to explain that you were not canceled as has become the trend no, you we, were actually we were fired yeah i mean we we left under <clears throat> duress yeah no i don't think it shows we're not now but we really <laughs> <are>. <laughs> we're more mature about it <laughs> so you're handling it pretty well then huh? oh, yeah. yeah that's good it's been it's been it's been over 13 years now yeah. really it's been but, a long time but you're legends now as a result of that effort don't you think i don't know i, I don't get any respect around up up where i live <laughs> 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 no, I think it's been a kind of a, a in retrospect, it's been a blessing in disguise because it did. Uh, it was a major point in our lives and other people's lives. And ten years later, uh, we get this re residual respect from, uh -huh. from uh, the stand -up. It was uh, uh, thought to be a very controversial show at the time. Uh, were, did you consider it no. laden with controversy? No, no, no. I don't. We we didn't. What we see, they didn't believe us. CBS when they hired us. See. We were replacing Gary Moore. It was the last rated show on television. We're going against Bonanza, and everybody got killed against Bonanza. Mm -hmm. So we said we want to be socially relevant. And they said, okay, anything you want. Anything you want. Because we'd be in and out in 13, yeah. 13 shows, which is now a big season. And uh, so once we did it and did the show, they started complaining about the, the type of material we were doing. And it, there was no controversy in it except what they created. In fact, like, we, we, we look back and now it's changed a lot. We were gonna, television's changed a whole lot. We were going to, things have changed a whole lot, like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Things have loosened up, like Lou Grant, you know, Lou Grant's Grant show. Uh, he's, they just uh, got it rid of him real quick. Yeah, it's amazing because we were saying things on our show. He didn't. He's yeah. not making a statement on the show. He's making it off the. Is that weird? Yeah. He very gets strange. he gets canned for saying things off the air, and we got for saying on the air. It's very righteous. Too. What what did that do to your? Um, at what point did you realize you had a, a an uphill battle on your hands there? A tiger by the tail. And we <laughs> noticed it about the third show in of the first season. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ed, what did that do to not only you guys as performers, but your relationship as as brothers? It, it cemented our relationship. I think at that point, uh, things were coming down us pretty hard, and uh, we started to take care of each other a lot more. Yeah. We did 72 of those shows. And I, I, Tommy and I would disagree sometimes, but the writers like Rob Reiner and, and Steve Martin, those guys, Mason Williams, they were actually radical compared to Tommy. Mm -hmm. And then I, I acted as Tommy's conservative piece. And I thought, uh, I, we argued about content a lot on the show, but we, we agreed on, on what we wanted to say. I just wanted to say it for a longer period of time, make yeah. more money. But what happened was that Dick, Dick and I are closer because of that show. And, uh, and it's really a a break to have a brother that you can uh, relate to, particularly with the ups and downs of being a comedian. You get very depressed and kind of manic depressive type of thing. And my brother, he's a, basically a fascist and he stays. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, we did our separate ways for a little bit. You know, we retired the nightclub act and I went out as a stand up straight man. And you don't get any laughs, but you don't, uh, <laughs> you don't ask for them either. You yeah. know, I don't need any laughs. I'm a straight man. What, uh, oh, uh, since um, uh, the pressure of having like a marriage, is enormous, and then if you're yeah. in show business, it's got to be doubled. But uh, how do, do you have an advantage being brothers? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we can deal with each other and say, uh, plus it's been very supportive for each other, and it doesn't get no, in the way. I don't think. I think. It, I think. It does. Do you fight at all? I mean, do you actually I, after a show do you go someplace? Just a second, I want to clear this up. I, I <laughs> no, we, we never, we never fight. No, 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 you can fight. It's much better to be brothers. It's family. You, uh -huh. know, you could say. Much more heated things, uh, you, you, know, you strike out each other, but you, you come back and, and become much more close. Well, uh, what, what can you count on that Tommy will do on or off stage that's going to irritate you night in or night out? Like clockwork, what do you, oh, here this comes again. Not, nothing. Really? Uh, Tommy, Tommy is, uh, if, if he was, stu uh, let's say, if he didn't have as much brains, <laughs> if he was dumber, he'd be an idiot savant. He had no, <laughs> you know, he, had no, he has no reason to be able to do that Tommy. It's like mm -hmm. savior, savior ruin type of comedy he goes right up to a point and you don't know how he's going to get out of the statement but something magically would come to his to his mouth Fortunately, I, was, I was born kind of inarticulate and i've used it as a as a crutch, as a crutch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jack parr said the neatest thing jack parr when we first went on jack parr's show jack had a habit of stepping on people's lines sometimes or breaking for commercial right in front of the punchline. i don't know if he did this by accident or not but he never knew when to cut in on my brother 
because Tommy didn't say mm -hmm. a joke. And then finally Jack says, I don't know what you got, but nobody's going to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you, would, would you ever want to get back into a, a weekly uh, situation on television now? Yeah, we would like to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're just, uh, we don't know how to do it. We don't know what to do. Yeah. I, I watch your show. I like, no you've done heroic efforts, you know, doing unique things. You've it's had a couple hard. of shots at other shows yeah. uh, since. But nothing that you really... Uh... Nothing we got into. We, uh, variety is basically a, a dead issue as mm -hmm. far as uh, network television. Would it be impossible to do that kind of show with that kind of material now and have it be a success? I think it would. I don't know. Maybe there... There's always... It's always fun to try. Yeah. yeah. But you have such a short time to put it together that... Well, there's, uh, there's two levels of success. One is the, your ratings and one is the quality of the show. Yeah. And I think, yes, you can put on a quality show, but are your ratings success? I don't know. Yeah. And it's a crapshoot. Like you said, 13 weeks is uh, people are buying property in Bel Air if they've been on for 13 weeks. <laughs> yeah, if you get a pilot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they absolutely. Buy a car. Uh, we're, what are we doing here? We're going away? Uh, the Smothers Brothers, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Thank you, gentlemen, Thank for being you. here. Enjoy it. <laughs> we'll be right back with the presidential barber, Milton Kitt.